Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss restricted stock. What is the big idea of restricted stock? Restricted stock is a form of a compensation plan. It's basically when the company grant transfer the company stock subject to certain limitation to their employees. What are those limitation? Usually there's a time restriction. What does that mean? It means the company will give you stocks, but guess what? You don't have access to those stocks. You can't do anything with them unless you work for us three, five, seven years. So it's a form of compensation or rewarding the employees. Well, this sounds like what we talked about in the prior session, options. So what is the difference between options and restricted stocks? Well, the best way to illustrate the concept, I'm gonna go back to my wife's example and show you Johnson & Johnson restricted stock award and compare it to option. But the bottom line is, it's used to compensate the employee. That's the main idea. So let's go back to the Johnson & Johnson brochure, then we'll come back to this recording. In the previous session, we talked about options. And if you scroll down right after options, also Johnson & Johnson reward you with something called restricted shares unit or restricted stocks. That's, what, that's basically what it is. So what is the difference between the two? Well, let's take a look at restricted stocks, then we'll compare two options. With restricted stocks, an RSU becomes a share of Johnson & Johnson on the vesting date. Simply put, if you wait enough and the vesting period is three years, simply put, Johnson & Johnson, if you work for Johnson & Johnson three years, you wait three years, we're gonna give you the, we're gonna give you the stocks. Regardless of what the stock price is, you will get the stock guaranteed. Versus the stock option, under a stock option, you only make a profit if the stock is above the grand date. Uh, the grand date price, which is, we, we assume in, in our example, $100. But under stock, restricted stock, you will get the full stock. You don't, doesn't matter whether the stock is $50, 100 or 150, the stock is yours. So for example, if you are granted an RSU and the market price is $100, when the RSU vest, which is three years later, you would own a full share of the price. You are free to hold, sell, do whatever you want with it. If our stock price rose to 130, the stock value is 130. And usually when they give you RSUs, they're lower than the stock options. So if they gave you 100 RSU, they give you 1000 options because the options, remember, you have to pay to buy the stock at a certain price. RSU, you are guaranteed the stock price. However, you have to wait. Now, why the RSU becoming more and more popular form of compensation? This is like off the record, not off the record. I'm going to go here on a tangent. If you remember in the prior session, I spoke about the 1998 to 2001.com era. And what happened is many executives, what they did, they went to work for those companies. And as soon as the option vested, they exercised the options, then they left, then eventually the company went down. So restricted stocks, you don't have to drive the stock price up. You have no incentive because you are guaranteed the stock price. So it doesn't give the executive the motivation, uh, the incentive to cook the books, to drive the stock price up because you are guaranteed the stock price. You are guaranteed the stock regardless what the price is not the stock price, you are guaranteed the stock. So that's why our RSUs are less risky. And it doesn't give the incentive for the managers to do what? To manipulate the stock price. Because you're gonna get the stock, just wait and you will get the stock. And in most, in, in most countries, once an RSU vested, you are free to hold, sell the stock with no further restriction. Once again, because Johnson & Johnson is an international company, you know, there are maybe certain rules in certain countries and this brochure is in English. And by the way, when Johnson & Johnson grants those options and RSUs, they ask you to select whether you want 100% options, 100% RSUs, 50, 50, 25, 75, so on and so forth. But this is beside the point. So let's go back to our presentation. Why stock restricted are used? Well, they are used because they, why, why, they, why they are popular? Because as long as you wait, you are guaranteed as long as you wait. And also you tie the employee performance to the company's performance. So what you're doing is, well, if the stock does well, and I'm, I, I own the stock, I do well as well. Again, generally companies would grant less restricted stock than options because you have to pay for the options. That's why they grant you more options. And options, obviously, from a risk perspective, the riskier, because if you, if you said, I want to take the options and the stock price fall below the exercise price, then your options are worthless versus restricted stock. Even if the price is $2, nevertheless, 
you got two dollars now the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example illustrating the journal entries before we look at an example, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. My motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting students one at a time. How I provide you resources, lectures, exercises, true, false, multiple choice. That's going to help you do better. This is a list, a partial list of all the courses that I cover. My CPA resources are aligned with your backer, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to 1,500 previously AI CPA released questions for FAR, RAG, Audit, and BEC. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. It will help me tremendously. Connect with me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram followers, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. The best way to illustrate restricted stocks is to actually look at an example. On January 1st, 20X3, Four Hat Lectures, my company issues 10,000 shares of restricted stock to its executive, Jihan Namur. Farhat Lecture stock has a fair value of $25 on January 1st, 2023. The service and investing period is five years. So I expect this executive to work five years. And after five years, they will get 10,000 shares of the stock. Although the fair value right now is 25, five years later, it could be $200 per share. So what entries do we make? Well, the first thing we do is we debit unearned compensation expense 250,000 simply put what i'm doing is i'm starting to record the restricted stock so i debit an account called unearned compensation how did i come up with 250,000 well it's 10,000 shares times $25 this account is a contra equity so it reduces my equity by 250 then i credit common stock as usual the number of shares i'm going to be issuing times the par value of a dollar the remainder goes to paid in capital 240,000. So on the grand date, this is what I do. Simply put, equity went down. This is contra equity. Equity went up. There is no effect. The total is no effect on equity, no effect on the income statement. Simply put, I am recording the fact I'm going to be issuing equity later down the road. Then a year later, December 31st, 2003, Assuming Jihan kept working for the company, I would record compensation expense now. Now I'm going to hit the compensation. I'm going to hit the income statement. I'm going to debit compensation expense 50,000, credit unearned revenue compensation 50,000. So what I'm doing, I'm taking this 250,000 and I'm going to spread it over five years, expensing 50,000 each year. So this entry would repeat itself for the next four years. So year one, this is year one. Year two will be the same entry. I will expense another 50,000, reduce unearned, unearned compensation, another 50,000, year three, year four, and year five. Now let's assume that Jihan leaves Farhat Lectures on January 15th, 20X5. So she worked 20X3, 20X4. At the beginning of 20X5, before I recorded any expense, Jihan left. So what do I have to do if that happens? If Jihan leaves before the restricted stocks are are mature mature it means they are vested i have to reverse everything that i did up to this point what does that mean let's see what's going to happen first let's take a look at our unearned compensation if we look at unearned compensation this account here we started it at 250 and i debited 50,000 for year one and i debited it 50,000 for year two which is 2003 and 2004 here's what's going to happen First, I'm going to have to remove the fact that I I wanted to issue 10,000 of common stock. I will debit common stock 10,000. So common stock, this account is gone. I have to debit paid in capital 240,000 because that's it. That deal is gone. I'm going to have to credit compensation expense 100,000. Remember, I credited unearned revenue, unearned compensation expense year one and year two. The debit was the compensation expense. Therefore, I reversed compensation expense. So notice in contrast to options and restricted stock, you reverse compensation expense. Why? Because I recorded it for year, year three and year four. Therefore, I have to reverse compensation expense. Also, I have to remove unearned compensation because my balance and unearned compensation is 150. 
because I, I used it, I, I uh, reduced two years. Now I have to credit 150 to bring the balance down to zero. So simply put, what I did, I eliminated all the compensation expense, all the unearned revenue, all the unearned compensation. Simply put, this entry, if you look at all the accounts, basically as, as, as if nothing happened on January 1st, year X3. So basically reverse everything that we did, including compensation expense, including compensation expense. What should you do now? The best thing to do is to go to farhatlectures.com and start to work. MCQs, look at additional resources to learn about this. Once again, invest in yourself, invest in your career. The CPA exam is worth it. Don't shortchange yourself. $30, give, give me a try for a month. You find it helpful, you keep it. You don't find it helpful, cancel. That's it, that's your maximum loss. The CPA exam is a great certification to have. It's going to open many doors for you. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.